In this episode of Denside Depot, we're going to modernize R460 that's going to be going in our Dearborn F-150 truck. So stay tuned and check out the really cool serpentine system we're going to put on it from CVF Racing. Okay, and we are now starting the engine on our Dearborn F-150 project. And unfortunately, the engine that was in the truck was filled with water, so we needed to pivot and go with the 460. So I reached out to CVF Racing to see what they had. As far as a serpentine system is concerned, they sent me out a really cool package. So let's check it all out. All right, and just so you can see, I have not done any test fitting or even touched the motor yet. So we are opening this for the first time. So I wanted to give you my full experience of installing this product and seeing how it goes and how it looks. And no, I've never installed one before. So I'm gonna be reading the directions and doing all this for the very first time here on camera. So let's get this unpacked and see what we got here. Okay, and I got everything laid out here and wow, it looks really, really good. So this is the Stealth Black Kit uh, and it is the serpentine system. So it has a regular style serpentine belts as you can see and we have a lot of parts here so we have the one wire alternator we have the Saginaw power steering pump we have our standard uh, sand and compressor and then we also have a new water pump as well and what I'm going to be doing in this video is just the mock-up assembly so we're going to put everything together but I'm not going to plumb or wire anything in this particular video but we will do that in a second video once the engine is in the truck so we have all the pulleys all the brackets and all the instructions laid out so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the old brackets and water pump off the truck and then we'll start putting it together and see how it goes. Okay, now I'm going to start installing the parts here. And again, I'm going to be taking this back apart because I want to paint this motor and check over a few things, pull the intake manifold off, etc. So I'm going to be putting this together without the gaskets just for mock-up purposes. So I'm putting the, the plate on, but I'm not putting any of the gaskets on for the water pump because obviously... I'm going to be taking it back off again. I'm only going to be putting in a couple bolts just for mock-up purposes. Plus our serpentine system is going to replace some of the bolts as well. As we will find out here as we put this together. So that's a pretty easy good start right there. That's great, no problem. Okay, so I'm just thinking logically here, I wanna move from the rearmost brackets to the front just to make sure I have the most space. So I think it makes the most sense to start with the AC compressor bracket. So you can see we have our instructions here. It's Okay, so this is really simple. You just wanna assemble the bracket first. Now I'm not torquing anything per the instructions yet because I'm gonna take it back apart. So now that I have the bracket assembled, it's just three bolts that go together. That's really simple. And now it just goes onto the engine like so. And there's three bolts to put it onto the engine. One is 7 16 and then the other two are 3 8 So very, very simple. Not difficult to understand whatsoever. Very, very good design in my opinion here so far. Okay, so I just have that on hand tight right there. And then this is the other bracket that goes up. Once you have the compressor on, that goes there. And then the long bolt that's going to go into the bottom of the compressor. So let's go ahead and put the compressor on. Okay, so for right now, I'm installing the compressor with the lines facing away from the engine. Okay, now I'm using the one bolt that's left to attach the final piece here, support bracket. And again, I'm just leaving this loose for right now, just for mock-up purposes here. Okay, there we go. So that's really like five to 10 minutes of work right there. Uh, and CVF also does recommend that you do leave those loose until you have everything assembled. So now we're gonna move on to the alternator bracket. Okay, so here's what we have. We have the main bracket right here, and you can see how it installs on the engine as so. But you need to note that there's two spacers that go behind this bracket and then there's one other bigger spacer that goes behind the alternator. So I think the best way to do this, and I don't know, we'll find out, is to put this bracket on first loosely in the correct position, which is right here. And I just want to get some threads started so it has some engagement but I don't want to tighten it down all the way because I want to be able to get the alternator in as well. Okay, so now I'm ready to install my alternator and just remember, you put this bushing behind it, the spacer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just 
and touch fit here. Got plenty of room. Slide her up in there. It's pretty obvious where the bolts go. I don't see how you could possibly be confused with that. Pretty clear where all that is going to go. Okay, now I'm installing the lower support. There's a longer, smaller bolt, 5 16ths, along with about a one inch spacer that's gonna go on the bottom on your timing indicator bracket next to the balancer. Okay, and it does come with this little bracket right here. That's a relocation bracket to extend it out a little bit. Just looking at the design here, I think this is probably the better way to go. So I'm going to install this uh, and use this particular part. Okay, and then later on, if I need a little more space here, I can always pull that bracket out and make further adjustments if needed. But with that being said, we already have the compressor and the alternator installed along with the water pump. And I can tell you, extremely easy. So now let's move on to the power steering pump. Okay, so now we're going to do the power steering pump. We have a main bracket here, the pump itself, and then another bracket that goes on to the cylinder head. And then, of course, another um, adjusting rod that we're going to be putting on. So let's start with by putting the bracket on the engine. Okay, and I'm just getting it down there a little bit hand tight. So that one goes on first. Looks like the power steering pump is probably going to be the most complicated of all the pieces to put on. Not that I've had any issues thus far. It's certainly been going just fine. All right now we're putting the bracket on. There is a Spacer for each of these the directions show you which one is which it's not super complicated Just got to measure it and that's pretty much all it comes down to All the hardware has been fitting on great Okay, now I'm going to attach the adjusting rod to the water pump Okay, now I'm going to attach the power steering pump There'll be spacers between them the top one just gets these two little washers and the bottom one's going to get, obviously, its own bolt. Okay, now I'm connecting the adjusting rod, making sure to put the correct spacer behind it. Okay, now I need to put the rear bracket on, and I just realized I put it one head position too high, so I'm just going to rotate it down to the bottom here. Okay, so now I know when I go to assemble it for the final time that I need to put it in that position instead, which is... Why I like to do mock-up. Now you do have to remove a bolt from the back of the power steering pump before you put this final bracket in. So just be aware of that. You have to remove that last piece and obviously you can see all mine bolts are loose here and that's fine because I'm just doing mock-up and everything but that's that's how it goes in there. So okay that's pretty good. Now I think I need to get on uh, the idler pulley. Uh, this is going pretty well. Uh, actually it's going really well. It definitely looks really good so far. The power steering pump is definitely the, the most confusing one to figure out out of all of them. But still, I've put a lot of kits on before, and this one's been really great so far. So now let's get, I think the idler goes here. I'm not sure. we got to open it up and take a look. Okay, so here's our idler setup. Uh, really couldn't be any easier than this. We're doing a 460, so we do not need a .2 spacer. So now we can go ahead and install it. So couldn't be much easier. going on right here on the AC bracket for us and that's it and the idler is on there okay I'm not gonna put all the decorative pieces on today because I don't want to get them scratched up uh, but now let's start putting all the pulleys on all right so here's the fun part where we really get to start seeing how everything looks uh, we do have to change the pulley obviously on our alternator okay I'm just gonna leave that mostly loose but all right here's the one that I think worries people the most and that is is this a press on <clears throat> which can be a pain having to use the presser power steering pump tool or does it slip this on and we got a woodruff key and that's just a simple slip on right there which is so nice because it is such a pain when you got to make an adjustment and press it on and off and there is a nice cover that goes on here I'm not gonna put that on right now because I don't want to scratch it okay so we have to pull the old style pulley off and I believe that there is a replacement fan looking in the box here for it as well. And it looks like it's going to be easy fix. 
or easy change out, I should say. This all comes apart like that. Let's see here. Alt fan. Our new fan for the alternator. Let me put our pulley on. Okay, and I'll get a 1516 socket to tighten that down. Uh, but that seems to be a good fit right there as well. Okay, and to prove I didn't mock any of this up before I put it together, I just realized that I accidentally put the <clears throat> I accidentally put the idler pulley on backwards. Because I was looking at it really quick and I'm like, uh, that doesn't look like it lines up with the AC compressor. So I really wasn't paying attention there, but that's two seconds anyway. Okay, so now that is on. And that concludes getting all the pulleys on. Now, of course, they're sitting on loosely still. Um, let's get a couple belts here and see what it looks like, because I'm excited. Okay, so this is cool. So we got nice big serpentine belts here, which is way nicer than the old style belts that seem to always squeak. Okay, and then the bigger one looks like... on like this okay and there you go that's it that is the full install everything is on uh, i can tell you that's definitely not more than an hour's worth of work that was my first time ever putting one of those on it was not difficult at all so you can see this is what the decorative covers look like and they just go on like that to fill in the gaps to give it that really nice finished look but i can tell you without running the engine that this was a breeze to put on it was no problem at all uh, the parts fit and feel great the directions were clear uh, it was not difficult at all it was not a big deal to put this together it's something that really anyone can do uh, in definitely not more than two hours i think an hour is very reasonable uh, to get this all together so now i know how to do it so when i put it together for the final time i can get everything torqued down correctly and everything else so with that being said, CVF Racing, a really great serpentine product for your small block or big block Ford, whatever you may need. Definitely check them out. I'll put the links down in the description below so you can order their product if you're interested. I will be doing a second follow-up video on this once the Dearborn truck is running. So remember, if you like this episode of Denside Depot, like and subscribe and keep restoring those classic trucks.